Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Democrats call it a smear campaign. The White House calls it disgraceful. I'm Laura Podesta, and we'll have more on the war of words stemming from something that a congresswoman said during a speech last month. And back here in the Treasure State, uh, Democrats accuse Republicans of violating the state constitution in an effort to pass Native American protection and tougher drunk driving measures. Coming up with a blow up is all about. Good morning to you. It is 629 here on your Monday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. And our top story, the war of words heats up between President Trump and a member of Congress. CBS News Laura Podesta explains what Representative Ilhan Omar said and how she now says she faces an uptick in death threats. Some people did something. Minnesota Democratic Congresswoman Ilhan Omar said when she made that comment during a speech at the Council on American Islamic Relations last month, she was trying to explain why the organization had been started in the first place to end hatred toward Muslims by separating the 9-11 terrorist attacks from the religion of Islam as a whole. CARE was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. But on Friday, President Trump tweeted his response to Omar's speech, an edit of the most horrific images from 9-11 and the words we will never forget. Oh my goodness, there is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. The New York Post also took aim at Omar, publishing this cover showing the burning towers with the headline, Here's Your Something. I think that it's a good thing that the president is calling her out for those uh, comments. And the big question is, why aren't Democrats doing it as well? Sunday afternoon, the party's leader, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, did respond, not toward Omar, but the president, writing, Donald Trump's dangerous video must be taken down. Omar says she's experienced an increase in death threats. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now over the weekend, the Yemeni American Merchants Association called on all Yemeni American bodega and deli owners, as well as our community and allies across New York City, to boycott the New York Post. It's not clear how long that boycott will last. 631 wow. now. Matt joins us, and the word I was kind of using was that slick, slushy sludge. Yeah. Because it's yeah. just kind of hard to hey, push you're through. Not, you're not far off, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. It's just kind of chubby rain for the chubby most part. Rain. Slurpy kind of thing yeah. out there, yeah. Uh, temperatures <laughs> continue to be cool enough that we're seeing rain or a rain snow mix <laughs> at times. Um, and it is a little uh, sludgy with that snow that's out there. We're not seeing a ton of returns on our radar, but there's enough that uh, there's still maybe a few showers trying to work their way through. The afternoon should dry out a little bit. I do expect daytime highs to be into the 40s under mostly cloudy skies. We do have a nice warm up on tap by the end of the week, but we've got some moisture to work through. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Chubby a rain. A little CR in the yeah. sky. Chubby rain. Chubby it's rain. 632 now. We're going to shift gears. Copper King Hotel in Butte is hosting the Governor's T Conference on Tourism and Recreation this week. And the conference started last night and will run through Tuesday. And the goal is to talk about the state's tourism and recreation, compare the state's numbers regionally and nationally. The conference hopes to spark creative thinking and to come up with some solutions to bring more money to the state through tourism. Our whole goal when you're in tourism in the state is to either keep someone in your community one more hour, one more meal, one more night. And if you can't keep them there, you want to keep them in the state of Montana. That's our whole goal. Now, Poker Venus says that this is the first time Butte has held the conference. Uh, in legislative news, just two weeks left in Montana's 2019 legislature, key lawmakers sometimes find creative ways to revive favored bills or ideas that appear to be dead. But on Saturday, a handful of state senators and citizens objected to this process and shined a light on it. MTN's Mike Dennison was there and files this report. Late Friday, a House committee killed an extensive proposal from Attorney General Tim Fox to toughen Montana's drunk driving laws. But by Saturday morning, an 81-page amendment had been prepared, including most of the DUI bill, to be jammed into a completely different bill, which was sitting in the Senate Finance and Claims Committee. But that's not all. The amendment also included contents of two other bills meant to address an epidemic of missing Native American women, the so-called Hannah's Act, and one other. The idea was to make this new, huge hybrid bill must-pass legislation so it couldn't be voted down. Democratic members of the Senate panel objected. 
even though I want to, I need to vote for Hannah's Act, I cannot do it with this DUI section in it. This is the democratic process that we're all elected and sworn to uphold, and now we're jamming a bill in there that's based in leveraging the lives of, of Native American women. It's, it's, it's disgraceful. It's, it's an abuse of our power. It's abuse of the system. That brought a response from the panel's Republican chair, Senator Ryan Osmondson of Buffalo. So if you'd like to bring an amendment, if you'd like to bring a bill, you're welcome to do so. That's how the system works. So, and then we vote and it either pass, passes or it fails. I have good ideas at times, I have bad ideas at times. Senator Jacobson, you have good ideas at times and you have bad ideas at times, and we vote on those ideas. Democrats on the panel moved to separate out the language on Hannah's act from the amendment, but Republicans voted that down. But after consulting further, Republicans relented and allowed that language to be removed. Yet a majority of the panel still amended the DUI language into the bill, passed it, and then consented to listen to public comment. John McDonald, a lobbyist for Montana newspapers, said the panel had violated Montana's constitutional right to public participation by not holding a scheduled hearing before the vote. Veteran lawyer and lobbyist John Metropolis had even harsher words. If this process is allowed to stand, I am here to bury the Montana Constitution, not praise it, if it allows this, because this is shameful, it makes a mockery of the system, of your efforts, of my efforts, whose plaything is the legislature's? Whose plaything are we? Do we really have a say? Most of that 81-page amendment was stuffed into this formerly one-page bill, known as a companion bill with a broad title for just this purpose in the waning days of the session. Several more of these companion bills remain in play. How might they be used? We don't know yet. At the Capitol, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Now just to note, the session is scheduled to wrap up by May 1st. Shifting gears just a bit to one of my favorite segments that we have here, 636. It's our awaiting child, and this month's waiting child, we're going to introduce you to Kenzie. Kenzie is a creative 10-year-old girl who loves to get her hands dirty with crafts. She's looking for a forever home. We caught up with her during a creation of her masterpiece. Good job. Meet Kenzie, a girl who loves to sparkle. Whether it's playing outside or getting a little crafty with paint, she loves to be right in the middle of it. It felt really good because you actually got to create stuff. Do you like getting your hands dirty? Yeah. yeah. Her favorite color? Purple. She featured the color prominently in this painting of her favorite creature, the unicorn. Ask her about art and she'll talk for hours. We made like a little pot kind of. Oh, okay. And it was in second grade that we did it. It was really cool. My teacher bought um, these things, um, like little canvas kind of. Uh -huh. we, no, we traced the Sharpie. And then after, I think we went out for recess, then she had like a bottle of like really sparkly stuff. And then she took it and she sprayed it all over. It was really cool. Kinsey's life isn't all arts and crafts though. She's a bright student that loves to dig into a good math problem. I like the plus, like pluses and subtracting, but sometimes the subtracting is really hard. Times is hard for me because I try doing the threes, fours, I know the fives. Yeah, fives are really good. Yeah, but not sixes or sevens or eights oh. or nines. You're, you're talking my language. <laughs> In a forever home, Kenzie would like to have brothers and sisters. But most importantly, a family that loves her. I want to make sure that they love me, and I want them to like know that I love them, kind of. Because I don't like. I want to be safe in the home. I don't want to get hurt. In Lockwood, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Oh, she's so cute. To learn more about Kenzie and other kids awaiting adoption, you can head on over to our websites and click on the community tab. Destined for a career in broadcast. The six, yeah. sevens, eights, and nines are hard for all of us here Absolutely. in Montana this morning as well, Kenzie. Forever <laughs> home. We so wish her the cute, best in yes. that. Uh, we're going to shift gears now in this week's Under the Big Sky. Jerry Locati and the team at Locati Architects in Bozeman have designed some of Montana's most spectacular homes, to Certainly. say the least. Yeah, and Jerry's talent for drawing started humbly at an early age, sitting at his family's kitchen table. Under the Big Sky is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Vein Clinic and Markovich Real Estate. 
I grew up in Billings, Montana, raised in a family of artists. With my mom being as interested in art as she was, we all kind of looked at that and went, you know, how do you do that? Why, you know, I mean, I mean how do you draw? How do you, how do you paint? And she was one that really wanted to teach us that. She taught us light and how to shadow. At some point, our TV broke. My mom just said, we're not buying a new one. So we sat around the table and drew in the evenings, trying to figure out how to draw a spoon that's sitting on the table. You know, going, hmm. And then, and, and then you just gain confidence doing that. And then you try maybe an apple. Then you, maybe you try a face. And then you go, oh, that didn't work. You know, and then you just, you just learn. My freshman year, I did really well in art classes, but really poorly in computer science and everything else. And I was going, oh boy, now what do I do? I took architecture as an elective. It's just a filler class. It just happened to be the very first one you have to take if you're going to go into architecture. I didn't realize that it was so art based. Art and architecture are so similar from the standpoint of proportion, light. Um, it's, just, it's just a three-dimensional space as opposed to a canvas. I did well. I mean, I wasn't used to getting, you know, more good grades than bad grades. So when I got out of school in the early 80s, there was a market for middle to small spec homes, and they were looking for someone like myself in architecture to draw them. So that was my first exposure to practical architecture. I'm convinced there's a lot of people out there that are very good artists that don't know it. And just because they don't have the confidence, they haven't tried. What an incredible human. That's now you awesome. can watch and re-watch all of our Under the Big Sky stories on our websites. Yes, you can. What an incredible human Can't wait he to is. see what the next segment's gonna bring. Yes, Jerry Licata, you are amazing. We do have to take a quick break, but